Oh, called to be. Do we feel that call within us sometimes? That, that call that is urging us forward? That there's something more? That's the divinity that you are. The divinity that you are that is infinite in its expression, that is saying there is always more for us to reveal. Always more for us to discover about the truth of who we actually are. And this idea of holding the high watch is really about how we can cultivate our consciousness. You know, one of our mission statements is that we're here to live an awakened and enlightened life. What does that actually mean? <laughs> right? I mean, when you really think about it, it's like, what does that really mean? It's beautiful. Don't get me wrong. I love our mission statement. But how do we actually do that? How do we actually live an awakened and enlightened life? So one of the ways that we can do that is through engaging in activities and global phenomena like Unity's World Day of Prayer. So once a year, Unity's across the globe, and yes, we are international in scope, are all coming together in consciousness to hold the high watch for the world. And we, I talked a little bit about this um, during a, last, a couple weeks ago around the, this idea of collective consciousness. When we come together in agreement, in collective consciousness, that is how we, as seekers, as those willing to live an awakened life, can actually up-level the consciousness of the entire planet. So this Wednesday at 7 p.m., we're going to have a service here that's going to be kicking off all around the globe. We have Christine Toulis playing harp. We're going to have a labyrinth set up in the back so that there's going to be a time for introspection, a time for deepening. You'll get to walk the labyrinth. You'll get to hold the high watch for other people, perhaps, as they walk the labyrinth. And you're invited to submit any prayer requests that you would like to submit. There's in your program there's a prayer request form that you can fill out. And the sky's the limit, you guys. The sky's the limit, like, you know, right all over it. <laughs> and there are going to be prayer chaplains and emeriti and anyone else who might be interested in sitting vigil here in the sanctuary on Thursday during the day um, that are going to be anchoring all of those prayer requests. And so if you want to come and be part of that on Thursday, 6.30 a.m., we have prayer chaplains who are going to get here at 6.30 a.m. So if you're an early bird, you can come. I'm looking at them right now. Um, <laughs> you can come and you can just be in the space. It's going to be open all day until 5 p.m. So if you want to drop in, you want to walk the labyrinth, it's a beautiful time to do so. So what are we doing when we're holding the high watch? We are anchoring the possible. We're not anchoring what is in time and in space. We are anchoring what is always possible, what is always available to us. So we might call this spiritual truth. We might sometimes call it the absolute. We live in the realm of the relative in time and in space. And yet behind that, behind what we're experiencing in circumstances and all the stuff, Right? Everybody in here is experiencing life, right? Behind all of that, there is the absolute. There are the things that are unchangeable. They are immutable. They are what I love. When I fell in love with this teaching is because I realized, oh, they're actually reliable. They're always there. Like, I can always access them. They're reliable. How many people in here grew up with a trickster god? A God that was sometimes there and sometimes not. And if you were good, then God was good. But if you were bad, then you were going to, right? That trickster understanding of the divine. That's not what we believe in unity. We know and believe that there are constants that we can allow ourselves to live into more fully. So we're anchoring the possible, which means that we have to embrace the possible. And so it's one thing to know that we can anchor it, but it's another thing to actually embrace it. So I was an actor for many years, and there's a game. I'm taking my sandals off, you guys. I hope you're okay with that. There we go. <laughs> like, I'm not feeling grounded in those right now. So um, we're invited to embrace the possible. So when I was an actor, we used to play this improv game 
which was called Yes And. And you got, you got up on the, and no matter what your partner said in improv, you had to say yes, and you weren't allowed to say no to them. You weren't allowed to say yes, but. How many times do we do that? Somebody says, oh, wouldn't it be great if we could go to France? Yes, but I don't really know if I'm gonna have enough time. I don't know how I'm gonna get the work. I don't know if I have enough airline miles. Where am I gonna find a cat sitter? All the things that trickle in that make it about the but. Now, what if we actually played yes and in our own life? The ideas that come to us, yes, and how can I actually make that happen? Yes, and how could that even be more fun? Yes, and what else is there? That's what I mean by embracing the possible. So I have shared this before, and you're gonna hear this from me a lot, right? I believe that there are four pillars to living an awakened life that with these four pillars, we actually can hold the high watch and we can actually grow and evolve, and that these four pillars are really the anchor for a spiritually fulfilling life. And the first one is meditation. Art led a beautiful meditation. If you haven't come to the 9.30 meditation, it's 20 minutes from 9.30 to 9.50, I invite you to come and stretch yourself and try it out and see what it's like to sit in community in the silence. It's really a beautiful, beautiful thing. And what meditation cultivates within us is stillness, our capacity to be receptive, our ability to be open, as Carolyn sang. And meditation cultivates our capacity to just be, really just be. No doing, just being. The next pillar is affirmative prayer. And affirmative prayer is unity's gift to the world. Really, honestly, I absolutely believe this. This is what unity has given to the world that is new thought. There is no other prayer process that mirrors what affirmative prayer does. Because affirmative prayer is about activating the beingness that you experience when you're in meditation. Affirmative prayer is about standing in your spiritual authority the divinity that you are that enables you to name and claim and activate in time and in space. And then we have the sacred sangha, and you just need to look around for that, right? Sacred sangha is so vital. It's where we get to show up in our humanness, but yet we're held in the realm of the absolute because that's an agreement that we're making with each other when we're in sacred sangha that I am going to be compassionate as you heal something that is showing up in our relationship. I am gonna hold for you a space of love as I watch you struggle with whatever circumstance might be going on in your life. And I am gonna be held by you when I am coming up with my own internal healing and with the things that are alive in me. Sacred Sangha is how we show up in service. It's how it's bigger than just us, my little navel gazing. We're larger than that. And then there's vision. And vision is the place where we get to grow. It's about possibility. It's about potential. And when we cultivate these four pillars in our own life, we actually can begin to activate something within us that allows us to live into that idea of an awakened and enlightened life. So Charles Fillmore has famously said, this is probably one of Charles Fillmore's most famous quotes, um, aside from zeal, the quote about zeal, which is, I will do the things that are mine to do, right? But affirmative prayer is the most highly accelerated mind action known. Human consciousness synchronizes, I love that, with Christ mind. And if you're triggered by the idea of Christ mind, just take a breath. We can call that Buddha mind. We can call that allness, right? It's different words, same, everyone's pointing to the same place. So what affirmative prayer does is allow us to let our humanness catch up with the divinity that we actually are. It allows us to step into something 
so that we can align with the truth of who we are. Anybody in here struggling with aligning with the truth of who you are? Like you remember it when all is good, right? And then something happens and all of a sudden you are so out of alignment with your Christ best loving self. Mm -hmm. So affirmative prayer is one of the most powerful practices that you can step into because it is a process of transformation. It's a transformation of consciousness. So in other traditions, prayer is spoken so that it will somehow convince God to do something or it will change the world around you to be different. And that is not what we're doing with affirmative prayer. With affirmative prayer, we are changing our own consciousness. That is where the prayer is happening, in your own consciousness. And as your own consciousness shifts, guess what? Your experience shifts with it. So when we are engaged in the process of affirmative prayer, we are anchoring spiritual truth. We are aligning ourselves with that truth and reminding ourselves. I had a teacher once say that affirmative prayer is remembering to remember. Remembering to remember that I am whole. I am love. And then that begins to shift our understanding, and the shift in our own understanding transforms our experience. All of this is framed, as everything that we do in unity is framed, around what will enable you to live a more fulfilled, joyful, loving, and compassionate life. That is the point of this teaching, so that you can live a more fulfilled life. So when we're stepping into an affirmative prayer, we are literally asking ourselves, what would be useful right now? What is it that will support me or support the person that you're praying with to live a more fulfilled, joyful, centered, anchored life? The divine is huge, right? I mean, it's all that there is. We believe that there's only one power and one presence, and that's everything. It's the planets and the stars and the cosmos, and it's the laws, and it's each of us individually, and it's huge, and it's like, wow. I don't know about you, but that's not very useful to me. I mean, it feels good, but how is that actually useful to me? What's useful to me is if I identify something about the allness that is and say, I am that. And that is what our 12 powers are. Our 12 powers are a way for us to identify and understand and recognize God in a way that I can actually use, in a way that I can activate in time and in space. So we're always looking at what is going to be useful for me? What will support me right now so that I can remember who I truly am and I can step into the world from that understanding of who I truly am? So the affirmative prayer process itself. So <laughs> my book will be coming out with Linda Martellowitzit in June of next year. Um, Linda Martellowitzit and I have been working for is it four or five years now, um, cultivating and updating the language of unity's affirmative prayer. We have been teaching it for a really long time, and we've been noticing where there's been struggles, where there is confusion, where people are not able to actually embody this teaching in the way that enables it to actually be really useful. And so what I'm gonna give you now <laughs> is the process that Linda and I have developed and so the first movement in this process is exactly what Carolyn was singing about. It is that I am open. I open to a new possibility. Because remember, affirmative prayer is not changing something out there. What is affirmative prayer changing? Right here. So the first thing we have to say is, I'm willing to shift. I'm willing, right? Even no matter how frustrated you may be, you don't have to actually shift right away. You just have to be willing to be open. Willing. Can you feel how that gives you a little bit more room? 
willing for a new understanding to arise in yourself. And from that place of willingness, we step into what I call the heart of affirmative prayer. The, the next three movements are the heart of affirmative prayer. So we start off, like I said, recognizing that God is, that there is only one power and one presence. That is the truth of who we all are, of all that is, is, and we pick one or two things that, we, that would be useful right now. So we would recognize that God is strength. Recognize that God is power. Recognize that God is love or compassion. Whatever it is that would be useful for you in that moment. And then the next movement is that we integrate that and understand that that is who we are. That if God is love, and I am love, ah, take a breath with me on that. We are that which is. So if God is strength, I am strength. If God is power, I am power. If God is compassion, I am compassion. Even if I forgot, I am reminding myself right now, the I am that I am. So we call that integrating the truth of who we are with our human understanding. The idea of this, the integration, is that you become the divine human. Right? You're able to be the divine human that you truly are. And then from that place of recognizing that I am strength, what does it mean that I know how to do? What does it mean that I can have? What does it mean that I can understand that I didn't understand before? What am I realizing about myself in that moment? And this is where we get actionable, right? This is where it actually is. How do I show up as strength in the moment? What does that actually mean if I am strength? And then the last piece is that we appreciate not that God is going to take care of it for us. We appreciate the shift in our own consciousness, that we are now made new, that we now understand something in a different way. And can you see how this is holding the high watch for yourself? That this process enables you to meet the part of you that might be so sad and so lost and so frustrated and so angry. It is a way that you can meet yourself from the truth of who you are and enable yourself to be able to step out in the world in a different way. And as you step out in the world in a different way, guess what? Your experience of the world will change. So the picture that, um, think of it as the, the movements spiral outward. You know, when you, when you come to prayer, you're usually feeling really tight and closed, right? Something is like hard particle, right? Prayer process is turning it back into the wave. So we start from this coiled up place within us and we open a little bit. And then we're recognizing God, we're recognizing what's useful. We open a little bit more. We recognize into, oh, it's me. I am all that that is. And because I am all that that is, that means I have all of this available to me. Can you feel how much more open it becomes? And then we're appreciating the expansive shift in consciousness that we have just initiated within ourself. So that heart of prayer can look something like this. If God is wisdom, and I am wisdom, that means I can choose wisely and well. It means that I can discern clearly what it is that is mine to do. Can you feel how we've taken the idea of wisdom and we've actually made it something you can do in time and in space, so that you are living into wisdom in a very concrete way. If God is strength and I am strength, then I can be strong and steadfast. I can have courage and tenacity in all it is that I am doing. If God is love and I am love, I can open my heart freely 
I can speak compassionately. I can be the harmonious presence out in the world with all who I interact with. If God is joy and I am joy, I can be lighthearted. I can have fun. Yeah, right? And if God is power and I am power, then I can be powerful. I can have self-mastery. And what that ultimately means is I can change the world. But it begins right here with the shift in my own consciousness. That's what it means to hold the high watch. To, to, to be able to move to that larger divine awareness of who I am, of who you are, of who we are, of who unity in Marin is. That's what we're inviting ourselves into again and again and again. So this is how we often feel in the world, right? What's alive for us is like, we're here. <laughs> it's demanding attention. It's super loud. All those aches and pains, which I've started to experience myself, so I totally relate, right? The change that is happening always to us all, right? Even the good things in life. Can we get caught up in our successes, in the things that feel really good, that are circumstantial, that are anchored in this outside realm. And what holding the high watch is inviting you into is to shift to this. It's not that those things disappear. It's that the truth and the absolute is what stands front forward. That is what calls your attention first and foremost. That is the place that you are choosing from. That is what you are looking for. Remember I talked about in the shadow, what we're looking for, we will see. What we are looking for, we will experience. So if I am looking for all the ways that I am weak, am I gonna find them? But if I look for the ways that I am steadfast and strong, am I gonna find those? Yes. And that puts us on a, on a regenerative cycle for ourselves rather than a degenerative cycle that keeps cycling back on how we're not enough. Affirmative prayer is one of the most powerful ways that you can shift off of what isn't working to what is working, to what is yours to what you can step into in time and in space because you are a divine human. And then there's the ways that that doesn't feel like it's possible, right? There's all the ways that that just feels like it's a challenge. Sometimes we're just drowning. Anybody in here ever experienced that? I have. <laughs> Myrtle Fillmore has this to say. Ooh, I love that. Somebody's phone has a beautiful, um, <laughs> beautiful ringtone. God is calling. <laughs> if the light of understanding does not manifest as swiftly as you expect, do not be discouraged. The truths you plant are as seeds that are growing in the soil of your consciousness, and they are bound to bring forth their harvest so that your whole consciousness will be illumined, spiritualized, transformed. I love Myrtle. Myrtle is one of my anchors um, because she really understood what it means to be a divine human. She really understood that sometimes the humanness takes over, but that what is always available to us is the divinity that we are. And if we're just willing to show up, if we're willing to do just as much as we can in that moment, even if it just means sitting for 60 seconds. We meditated for 60 seconds. That's an invitation that is gonna grow in our consciousness, that the seeds that we are planting are working you. So you don't have to become everything all at once. Let's take that off of our shoulders. We are here to grow and to evolve and to become. I love this, this, this uh, picture. This is why we pray for each other. Ka 
because we can't always be there for ourselves, right? Sometimes it's just too much. Sometimes it literally feels like the world has fallen underneath our feet. And that's why we come together in sacred Sangha. That's why we come together like this online in person, so that in those moments when our spiritual understanding feels dry and arid and nothing is growing, that there are those around us who happily carry, carry us through those challenging spaces. Most of you have experienced that it's a lot easier to see the good in someone else than it is to actually see it and know it in yourself. And so what you're invited into for World Day of Prayer is to really live into that. Can you hold the world in prayer? Can you hold this community in prayer? Can you see and know the possibility, the divinity that is actually concretely present and palpable in every single creature being that is on this planet and beyond? Can you you plant the seeds in your own consciousness and allow that to take root and to be transformed? So we have several people who are taking trips, and so I thought that this would be a perfect opportunity for us as a community to practice some affirmative prayer. Everybody feel good with that? Right? So Charcelle is leaving and she's going away. Jordan is her stepdaughter who's going with her. Um, Carolyn, if you want to just come stand right here. Carolyn's going away too. Anyone else in here who's taking a trip? Because that's what we're going to pray for. Come on up here. <laughs> and if you're watching at home, just you can stand right where you are. We're going to hold you in this, in this powerful field. Anybody who's going to be traveling and wants to be held in light, come on down. <laughs> just make a, make a row here. <laughs> Ooh, we got lots of people traveling. I love it. Look at this community. <laughs> so we're going to hold the high watch. Now here's the sneaky part about affirmative prayer, is that in order for us to hold the high watch for them, where does it start? right here. Remember, where is prayer happening? In our, in our consciousness. So what I'm going to invite everyone to do, and you guys get to do this up here too for each other, right? And if you want to hold hands, you can hold hands. You don't have to. We're good, depending on what your comfort level is. So we're all going to take a breath, and I'm going to guide you through the five steps. And I'm going to invite you to silently just anchor truth for each person who's up here, and remembering too that we can anchor this truth for anyone who is traveling, because there is only one mind, there is only one heart, there is only one breath. So we open our heart, and we quiet the mind, and we're willing for this perfect possibility that is ease and grace and travel, that is flow, that is harmony, that is oh, just that, that joy that comes from that beautiful adventure that all of these people here are being invited on into, but that we're also inviting ourselves into. So just feel that possibility of adventure. And we're going to recognize God. So pick a way that you think what would be useful to you if you were going to travel, and that will be useful to them, trust me. So pick a quality. What would be useful to you if you were going to be traveling? Strength, joy, power, life. What would be useful to you right now? And know that it is you. Just feel that that's the truth of who you are right now. And then expand that field of understanding and include everyone here and those who are on live stream. Just feeling that container. So whatever quality of the divine you are claiming, see it, know it is also each of these people's identity. It's available to them. It's accessible to them. And now what is it 
as the divine living expression of strength or power or wisdom or joy, what is it that they get to experience while they're traveling? And just feel it in your bones. Feel the grace, the ease, the flow, the joy, the connection. See them moving through, being touched, their hearts being touched. See them having an awareness of growth and expansion, of learning, of creativity, of joy. That deep, heartfelt connection as they connect with loved ones or make new friends. The capacity to to do all that is theirs to do. To be all that they are called to be. And now we just appreciate the fact that we know this. Feel how appreciative you are that we know this for them, that we know this for each other. Oh, how good that is to know. Right now, everything they need, we need, we already have. All travel, blessed and a blessing. And in agreement, we all say, and so it is. And so it is. Amen. Ashe. Woohoo! That was fun. You guys can go sit down. That was fun, right? <laughs> so that's what it means to hold the high watch, right? And did anybody notice that when we hold the high watch for others, do you feel better too? Yeah, that's the secret. Shh. Right? That's the secret that we think that these prayer chaplains are just so altruistic and that's just, they get nothing from this as they just show up for all of us. Ah, they get so much. So think about that too when you want to ask for prayer, but you think, oh, I don't know. I don't want to bother them. Just remember that they are getting as much out of the prayer request as you are. There's no separation in that. All right. So, World Day of Prayer. So, wouldn't it be fun to do more of that on Wednesday night? (laughs) So, come join, 7 p.m. The labyrinth will be set up, as I said. The um, fill out your prayer requests. And then there's a very pretty filigreed box that's in the the lobby. Um, You can also put them in these boxes up here, too, and they'll get sorted out. But just make sure that you give that to somebody so that they can be held in prayer during World Day of Prayer. So I am going to invite Carolyn to come back up. And how appropriate is this song, All Around the World? Well, you'll notice.